All right, so real talk, I can't think of a worse time than right now to be upgrading your gaming PC. GPU prices are absolutely through the roof for pretty much any listing out there, or they're just plainly out of stock. But here we have the new NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti. And don't get me wrong, this thing is incredibly fast, but it's also starting at 1200 US dollars. You guys already know that finding a 3080 Ti in stock after this review goes live is going to be damn near impossible, just based off of the current GPU market and how difficult it is right now. But in the rare event that you can, let's see what you get in return. So we get the same flow through cooler here as on the 3080, which is nice and compact at two slots for the Founders Edition, with length and height also being identical. This makes the 3080 Ti the most powerful two slot card out, and the spec bump over the 3080 actually brings it a lot closer to the RTX 3090. In fact, versus the 3090, you're only losing two of the total 82 SMs, which means just 256 less CUDA cores, with the biggest hit coming to memory capacity, which is cut in half, and also there is a slightly lower memory clock as well. Over the RTX 3080, this means roughly a 17% bump in CUDA core count, an extra 2GB of VRAM, and a wider memory bus width as well. All in all, we're basically looking at a two-slot RTX 3090 here with half the memory, and some very minor handicapping to keep the 3090 sitting at the top of the charts. But one spec here that is matched against the RTX 3090, oddly enough, is TDP. 350 watts is what this thing will be sipping back at full load, so yeah, definitely make sure you have a high airflow case to keep this thing running cool. And if you don't mind the much bigger cards, stay tuned for my video tomorrow where I'll be comparing the two slot Founders Edition cooler to the much beefier Asus Strix and MSI Supreme X. Now in regards to the price, I'm almost numb to these MSRP values that we're seeing at every recent GPU launch. The fact is, sure, if you can find an Nvidia FE card at a retailer like Micro Center or Best Buy, granted your region even sells them there in the first place, $1200 US is what you'll pay for a 3080 Ti. Board partner cards, on the other hand, expect to see these a lot closer to $1,500 at minimum. So what do we get in terms of performance? Well, with the specs pretty close to an RTX 3090, at least as far as gaming is concerned, we pretty much get that. The 3080 Ti is pretty juiced up, so performance is positioned a lot closer to the 3090 as opposed to the 3080, but it's a smaller margin than a lot would expect, especially since the 1080 Ti and 2080 Ti did provide pretty beefy performance gains over their plain 1080 and 2080 variants, but here we just don't see anywhere near as much dominance over the 3080. Part of that is because the 3080 is already blazingly quick, and when you're already pushing 300 watts, you realistically can't go much further. And although MSRPs are almost a useless metric today, a $500 price premium over a 3080 here for a 6.5 performance boost does not look worth it in the slightest. Although just as with the 3090, performance margins do improve a little bit at 4K, potentially due to its beefier memory bandwidth. So I'd almost put the 3080 Ti in the same bucket as the 6900 XT, a very expensive gaming GPU that, in a normal world, is just not worth the price premium over an RTX 3080. I understand that some of you just want the best of the best, but how irresponsible are you willing to be for that extra fraction of performance? Nvidia claimed that the 3080 Ti is 1.5 times the performance of a 2080 Ti and about 2x the performance of a 1080 Ti, and although we're not quite there, we're not far off here in Death Stranding. There's no doubt here that the 3080 Ti is an absolute beast of a gaming GPU. This thing is quick, but let's not try and pretend that most of you will actually be able to buy it for $1,200 US. And even against the 1080 Ti, where again, the 2X performance is super impressive, with that kind of performance you can basically run anything, but in today's market, I'd also expect you to pay around 2X the price. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, we do pretty much see that 2X 1080 Ti and 1.5x 2080 Ti performance margin here, with the 3080 Ti delivering consistent 100 FPS plus performance. So if you have a 4K 120Hz TV with HDMI 2.1, it's a really good fit. It just really depends on what price you can get it at compared to the 3080. Because the 3080 is not far off at all. Most of the time I saw it within the 3080 Ti's reach by about 7% at 1440p and around 9% or so at 4K. So again, there's no denying that this is a 
fast GPU. And in strange times like this, maybe there is no worthy comparison against the 3080 if you can't buy that either. After all, with more lockdown time, more working from home, and more cool new games coming out, the fact is the 3080 Ti will sell like hotcakes. Nvidia knows that gamers and miners will basically pay anything for a 30 series card today, and that's why the 3080 Ti exists. That's also why board partners and retailers are asking a fortune for their stock as well. They know it'll sell in today's market. In the end, the 3080 Ti does not make much sense at all on paper versus the 3080. What ends up happening in the real world with prices and stock, I have a pretty good guess, but the best that I can do here is show you the numbers so that at least in the event that you have the opportunity to buy either of them, my recommendation would absolutely be the 3080. That's especially if you're gaming at 1440p, but even the 9-10% to margins that you'll see at 4k aren't worth the, on paper, $500 price premium. As for production workloads, again, very close to the RTX 3090 here thanks to that increase in CUDA core count and memory bandwidth. I feel like the spec increase here is reflected a lot better here as opposed to gaming. As for thermals, as far as I can see, the TI uses the same cooler as the vanilla 3080, and thermals only seem about 2-3 to three degrees warmer than the 3080 FE under the same conditions. Although I will note that the fan profile of the 3080 Ti is a bit more aggressive, close to 2000 RPM here at full load, so the two-slot cooler is fine, undervolting definitely is recommended though as always, and make sure that you're putting this thing in a high airflow case. Clock speeds are also a little bit more reserved here compared to the 3080 and 3090 with around 1800 MHz at full load. There also doesn't seem to be much headroom here for overclocking when it comes to the FE cooler, but that's something that we'll take a look at in tomorrow's video. Power consumption wise, I saw the 3080 Ti easily taking full advantage of its 350 watt power budget, and I'd expect aftermarket cars to push that limit closer to 370 watts out of the box. So 750 watt power supplies are recommended here and a good rule of thumb. So in an ideal reviewers world where GPUs are at MSRP and there's plenty of stock and they're not being bought to mine Ethereum, uh, the 3080 Ti is just not a card I can recommend. Uh, for 7-10% to performance over the RTX 3080 for a 70% increase in price, it just sounds absolutely ludicrous. And saying that out loud, you know, this is just not a good use of money when it comes to buying a gaming GPU. And honestly, what I really don't like the thought of here is that the 3080 Ti will be actually eating into the production of GPUs like the 3060 Ti, the 3070, and the 3080, which at least on paper are overwhelmingly great GPUs but it's not an ideal world, which means that the rest is up to you. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the RTX 3080 Ti, and good luck if you really wanted to pick one of these up. Our links will be down below in the description if you can potentially find those useful. As always, a huge thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.